everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Hallmark Heartbeats, a podcast all about Hallmark movies. I am your host, Camille. This week I am reviewing another listener's choice, 2020's Hallmark movie, Nature of Love, starring Emily Ullerup and Christopher Russell. Official synopsis, city girl Katie, played by Emily Ullerup, is writing a magazine feature on a glamping resort. From, from Sporty, she faces her fears trying to camp activities with Will, played by Christopher Russell, a rugged outdoorsman and a nature guide. Katie's job is writing advertisement blurbs for Modern Women magazine. Her usual assignment are for 20 words or less. Her desire is to write more than 20 words, though. She wants to write a paragraph, or maybe two. Her boss only wants 20-word blurbs. A worker having broken her leg offers Katie an opportunity. The assignment is glamping, a combination of camping and glamour. In other words, seems like something only rich people do. She used to spend a week at Sunrise Peaks Resort. Katie is a city girl. Camping even with flair and glamour is not her thing. I mean, she doesn't own hiking boots. But that's the pitch she has given to her boss. I will bring a fresh and honest perspective. Bring being a city girl out of her element. Assignment, 2,000 words. Much more than the usual 20. And she is not to tell anyone she's a journalist. We are introduced to several supporting characters. Chase is the resort chef and camp butler. Someone that will fulfill all guests needs. I can't believe this is a real thing. Olivia Berry, her family owns the resort, and Penny is Kate's neighbor, staying in the text, tent next to her. Rewatching this movie, I am reminded of a Zen proverb about a full cup versus an empty cup of knowledge. I am paraphrasing, but a master, Zen master is met with a student who wants to gain all the knowledge the master has. So they drink together and start a conversation where the student keeps listing all the things he already knows. The master pours the student some tea in his already filled cup till it overflows. The student brings this to the master's attention. The master said, exactly. You are like this cup, so full of ideas that nothing more will fit in. Come back to me with an empty cup. What was special about Katie is she comes to the resort already having an empty cup, having no knowledge of the outdoors, feeling truly out of her comfort zone, ready to be filled with knowledge and experience. I honestly don't think there was a better way to introduce a character than riding in on a horse like some sort of lone ranger. We are introduced to Will Martin, a conservationist, guide, a mountain man. He is the Zen master in this movie. Will loves the land, undeveloped. He loves nature, enjoys sitting in silence to watch the sunrise, stargazing, hiking, climbing. He gives off the air that he is a loner, having to do his travels alone. But we find out, in reality, Tarzan just hasn't found his Jane. He leaves many tours in the resort, bird watching, fishing, canoeing. But no matter what, early in the morning, as the sun rises, you can find him at the same spot, alone, watching the sun rise over the mountains, soaking it in silence. He usually does this alone until Katie joins him. First lesson taught... Sit in silence. Enjoy the beauty of nature. No need to capture with your phone to store it in a memory card. Instead, capture it with your eyes and store it in your mind. The chemistry is palpable between Will and Katie from the beginning of the movie. Penny definitely saw it and captured it while taking pictures. Slowly, this loner mountain man is seeking the company of a beautiful city girl. Opposite definitely do attract. First activity Katie participates in while at the resort is bird watching, led by Will himself. 
Imagine the world without birdsong. Birdsong is our nature's radio. I never thought about it like that, but it is true. Bird songs definitely fill the air, especially daytime. I feel crickets take over the night shift. <laughs> if there was any question about the empty cup of knowledge, the binocular scene was definitely a clue. Second task lesson taught. Listen first, then look. Then you can speak. They take the time to search for the clues in nature. Olivia is looking for investors for an expansion. She's working closely with Will to try and still conserve some parts of the resort. She has offered him a job to work at the resort full time as an advisor to keep this land safe, to make sure this beautiful land is not overdeveloped, to make sure the impact is minimal. But Olivia has feelings for Will, but I don't think it's mutual. Sabrina, Katie's boss, knows about the wilderness guide and wants to change the premise of the article. From fish out of water finding herself to fish out of water finding herself with a mysterious, hunky mis mountain man. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That sounds more exciting than city girl lost in the woods finding herself. Will leads a group to the lake to go fishing. He's assumed to be a journeyman. Why did he start working at the resort? The place offers him the best of both worlds. He gets to educate people about nature and conservation, while also encouraging others to have that desire and passion for it as well. The third lesson taught, pass on the knowledge to others so they too can join your quest. Will has it accepted Olivia's offer for full-time work, advisors for the developers. Why? Because he loves Sunrise Peaks the way it is, undeveloped. He feels part of his responsibility if he takes this job is to make sure the impact is minimal. But also another part of him doesn't want the land to be touched at all. As Will and Katie go canoeing, we learn more about Katie and her desires to write. Her passion has always been writing. She wants to be an author as a kid, majored in English. They both share how they would describe the beautiful scenery in their own words. Fourth lesson learned. We all may be looking at the same things, experience the same things, but we all see it and describe it differently. We'll share stories about the stars he learned from his camp counselor at the campfire. I think it's so romantic. Being in the long hikes does get lonely. He'd rather be a lone wolf, though, than be alone with the wrong person. Fifth lesson learned. Better to sometimes be alone than to be with the wrong person. Be okay with yourself, who you are being in, before inviting someone to join you. Katie still hasn't told Will about the article. She hasn't told him she's a journalist whose boss wants her to write an expose of sorts on Will Barton. Thought of telling him about the article is scarier than anything I've ever done. That, my friend, is love. Will and Katie goes horseback riding and stops at the beautiful lavender grove field. This is a piece of land that Will definitely wants most protected. Olivia promised to keep it a secret from the developers because she knows the most beautiful is sadly the most desired, but definitely should be the most protected. Will finds the surveyor's market in the middle of Lavender Grove, a land that no one is supposed to know about. Although technically, Olivia didn't bring the developers to Lander Lavender's Grove. Ariel's gave it away, and now the developers want to build the hotel there. Because of this, Will rejects the job offer, and Olivia. His heart is no longer at Sunset Peaks. Kitty finally confesses her identity and purpose of being at the resort to Will, after he overhears her and Penny talk. She tells him about the original promise of the article, a city girl broadening her horizons, but then had to tell him about what the boss now wants, a romanticized story of the mountain man guide. I honestly don't understand Will's reaction. It's not like Katie wanted to write the story about him. 
She tried to fight for the original promise, but it wasn't her, what her boss wants. Definitely not Katie. I don't understand why he reacts like Katie misled him or whatever. I don't understand their reaction. Second lesson revisited, taught by student. Listen first, look second, then speak. Olivia has been trying to save Lavender Grove, but her words haven't changed the developer's mind. And that's when Katie comes up with a brilliant idea. She might know of a way to help with 2,000 words. Katie goes back to work writing 20 to 25 blurbs for advertisement. She isn't happy. It lights a fire in her and she returns with an article that the magazine should definitely publish. Quote, this is an article about how much the resort has to offer, how I was challenged and inspired to overcome my fears, how Will is a guide like no other, and how the natural beauty of the landscape needs to be respected and the importance of conservation. Because without it, Sunrise Peaks wouldn't be what it is today, unquote. All that in 1,998 words. The article saves Lavender Grove. Katie realizes the power of her words. The ability to encourage, promote change are not in this case. Love that she initiated the kiss that left him speechless. I give this movie 4 Point eight out of five stars. It was an awesome movie. One of the best. Top tier. Again, this is no surprise that it's a fan favorite. I am a huge fan of Emily. I've seen her in several Hallmark movies. Though I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen Chesapeake Shores. She always has great chemistry with her co-stars. I've seen four of Chris R Russell's Hallback movies most recently. Chasing Waterfalls, Nature of Love, Summer of Love, and Love in a Forecast. I feel like he is typecast. Three out of the four movies I saw has Chris playing the rugged outdoorsman, showing the out-of-place girl all about nature. The fourth movie, he wasn't a lead, but he owned a yacht and was CEO of his charity foundation. Her love is being out in nature and water more. I just would like to see more of a range in his roles. I know he just finished filming a movie directed by Christy Wolf, same director of Chasing Waterfalls and Love in the Forecast, where he played a firefighter. I'm excited to see a possible different role for him. The setting where the movie was filmed is beautiful. I appreciate the lesson of enjoying nature in silence. Conservation is definitely important. Nature has to be important. Development can't be more important than the res respecting the land. I absolutely love the idea of 2,000 words of l or less. The power to encourage inspire, change, or say the same. I took inspiration and did this review with less than 2,000 words. 1,986 to be exact. I love the supporting actors. That This was a female-driven movie. There were four female characters in this movie. Katie, Penny, Olivia, and Sabrina versus two, Chase and Will. Also, it was directed by a woman. I just love it. There were no wasted storylines. Each storyline in this movie had their time and their space. Nothing was out of place. The only negative really I found, if I had to be picky, is where are the s'mores? Can it really be camping without s'mores? Uh, yes, I'm aware they had s'mores in the movie, but look this deconstructed so I don't think that counts we need fire pits and a group of people with marshmallows on sticks to really be about camping in conclusion 
Thank you all for listening to my podcast this week. You can listen to the podcast on all platforms. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Podbean, TuneIn Alexa, Pandora, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Follow us on all social media platforms. Our Instagram page, Hallmark Heartbeats. Facebook page, Hallmark Heartbeats Podcast. And Twitter, Hallmark Heartbeat One. Buy us a coffee on www.buymeacoffee.com slash hmarkheartbeats. We have two levels of membership. For $1 a month, Americano level, you get to have a voice on the podcast. You get to choose which movie I review for weeks Hallmark doesn't have a brand new movie, like this week. For $5 a month, Caramel Macchiato level, you get access to never released podcasts. For example, the month of May I reviewed Birthday Wish, star Jesse Schramm and Luke McFarlane. It also includes raw, unedited footage of our interviews with the actors. Next week starts Summer Nights for Hallmark Channel. Four new movies, four new podcasts reviewing those movies. May 7th, we have the podcast reviewing You Had Me at Aloha, starring Pascal Hutton and Kavon Smith. May 14th is the podcast reviewing The Baker's Son. May 21st, her pen pal recap. May 28th, the last week of June, and the last new movie for the Summer Night series, is Sand Daughter Cove. I will be joined with a guest co-host, Brittany Stanley, from the Oi with the WB Already podcast. I'd like to thank everyone for listening, and I'll see you guys next week. Mahalo. Bye.